right, joining me now is the man who could be fighting Sean O'Malley next for the UFC Bantamweight title, uh, fresh from his trip to Miami. A nice little vacation down there for the weekend, right? Uh, how was Miami, yes. Marab? How we doing? Miami was great, really beautiful, and I love this pl sp place. Uh, I, I was ready for fight there, you know. I just, I just don't go and I just. I wasn't just make weight. I just, I was ready for a fight. But yeah, so it, I think this way is better. Now I have more time. I mean, we, we can. I will prepare even better for this fight, and I'm ready. How was the experience being a backup? Was it kind of weird, right? Because on one hand, it's you're not sure you're fighting, but you still gotta put yourself in the best position. So can you kind of talk me through? Uh, just the decision to accept that and ultimately what the vibes were like when you stepped on the scale. Uh, yes, it was a little bit weird uh, because they told me a week before if I want to be a backup fighter, I said, of course, yes. You know, uh, I want to take this this challenge and I'm always ready. And, um, and uh, yeah, I started carrying weight and go there on Wednesday. I was there whole time in hotel. I don't go out or enjoy like anything. And I was ready for fight because you have to be. You know, everything can happen. As we see, uh, Chito Vera almost missed weight. You know, I think he did cheat a little bit. I think he did touch the, with his elbow to this, whatever the cover was. And uh, anyways, um, it was weird uh, because I knew I, I wasn't fighting, but there is always chance, like even 5%, 10%, I may fight. And uh, if I have to fight, it's big, big risk, big responsibility. And um, uh, yeah, but uh, worked out good, you know, this way. It was better this way. But if anything was something, yeah, uh, yeah I was ready. And was the physical process, I mean, you just cut weight like a couple weeks ago, right? So to make that quick yeah. turnaround and hit the scale, uh, like you said, it's it's difficult enough for fighters to, to hit that mark once, but for you to hit it in a couple weeks span, was it? Did you notice any difference? Was it more difficult to hit that mark? Yeah, of course, it was more difficult uh, because uh, usually after fight and after big weight cuts, you enjoy food, you relax, you're not sharp like usual, but um, somehow after hand is fight. I wasn't feeling that I was in a fight. I was, I had so much fun with Henry, and uh, uh, and after I was back to the gym, um, training. I have same motivation, same energy, but and uh, but uh, but I have to travel in Mexico, and I have to go see my team in New York, and I have to just do dinner with my family members, my good friends, who. Uh, I enjoy spend time with, and I did all that. And they tell me, "Hey, you want to be a backup fighter?" Of course, I want to be a fighter. And then that was all these things. Um, it was a little bit, a little bit difficult. But you know, like I said, I make weight, and I'm always ready, and I don't have any excuses. I'm always healthy, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Some people say Pitbull's Mr. Worldwide, but I guess you are traveling, going to Mexico, going to New York, going to Miami. Um, then the fight night comes, obviously, Cheeto Vera and Sean O'Malley are in the cage. Very one-sided performance from Sean. A lot of people, including myself, thought he looked very good. I guess from your from your perspective, being there, cage side, watching two guys that you're likely going to fight the winner of that fight next, I guess what did you think of Sean's performance, and do you feel any differently about him coming out of that matchup than you did coming in? Uh, Sean looks good. You know, he... Um... So, yeah, Sean was looking good. He he did what he was supposed to do, you know. Even we all know that he was going to win this fight. He did a very uh, spe spectacular way, you know. Like how, he, you know, he he dominated Chito Vera. Uh, and uh, I, I have so much respect for Sean as a fighter. You know, as a fighter, he's a good fighter, and I, I take a big challenge to him. You know, I don't, I don't look. Is it easy for me or something? But as a person, he a little bit stupid because he should mention my name and he should call me out and make even bigger fight. This is big fight. Me and me and he, we we are we, we are fighting. You know, there is no other fights for him or for me. You know, that this fight has to happen. He just 
defend his belt only once and now I'm the next and um, but I don't know somehow he's not mentioning my name and he's not calling me out and don't make this fight big fight you know like an even bigger fight and uh, uh, but it was a good fight yeah yeah and were you uh, when he took the microphone right and he calls out your, your friend there, uh, Ilya Taporia. Were you surprised? Did it catch you off guard? Or did you think that he was going to go in that sort of direction? Yeah, I was very surprised. Like, what this guy doing? Like, like w- just either be be quiet or just don't call somebody who's not going to fight you. This fight not going to happen. Ilya is great champion, but he just win his belt. And then now UFC not going to let this fight happened because it's first fight defend other uh, 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 like you know it's like the Sean he it's not like he cleaned division or something he, he, he I was supposed to fight him for this fight but he called number six guy okay I understand we all understand yeah some people want to see this and UFC support this fight okay we understand but now let's move on and let's fight me yeah of course like I was very surprised I was mad actually like um, he don't call me out or he called Ilya, uh, but you know we all see the Ilya and say UFC don't give a shit about you know about his <laughs> this you know. And, yeah, uh, why do you think Sean called out Ilya? Was it just do you think the money fight? I think he just don't want to uh, mention my name. You know, I think I don't know. I don't know. I think he don't like my nose. You know, he he's a Marab, has a cracked nose. I don't know, bro. It's it's <laughs> it's. it's just hey, I'm a number one contender. I have a 10 fight win streak, and I'm the next. And he should just fight me, you know. Like I don't know. But somehow he don't like me, and he don't want to fight me. You know, I I don't know. I don't know. Mm. And he's smart guy. Maybe he sees saw some challenge uh, from me, and um, uh, and he's just ignoring me since 2018. I, I after this, I win 10 fights. I was mentioning his name. Every Every fight is shown always ignoring me, always. And there was that video that came out afterwards of, of you trying to talk to him in the back when he was leaving. And um, ultimately, that was what you were trying to, to kind of say to him, right? You were saying, say, you should you should have said my name. Is that kind of what the gist of it was? Yeah, uh, I said, congratulations. And he kind of ignored me again. He's like, thank you. He not even shake my hand. And bro, I said, you should mention my name. And then he he's oh shit he said oh I don't even know who he was like again I'm like bro he just like I mean I, I give respect all the champions and I did give him respect but he it's that's not champions move that's what real men what real men should do you know he should be better than that you know yeah for sure and I guess um your buddy Ilya right I think. A lot of people thought it was interesting that he came out and said Marab's next, right? In a sport where everybody yeah. can be kind of selfish and like he might see see it as, oh, a big champ versus champ fight. There might be some money for, for me on the line. But he, yeah. he said, you know, Marab's next, kind of squashed the doubt on that one. I guess what does that say about Ilya? And, and I guess have you talked to him at all uh, just about that whole call-out situation? Yeah, Re- Ilya is real champion. Ilya is real man, and he, of course he's my brother, and I love him. And of course he did he did right thing. Uh, and um, yeah, I, I don't talk to him like after after fight. You know, I know he's crazy busy. He knows I am busy. We all doing very good in life. We all training, getting better, and. Uh, uh, and but uh, you know we always support each other. I'm gonna see him uh, in soon in a couple of weeks in uh, either in Georgia or in Spain, and uh, we're gonna have and we're gonna spend good time together. And uh, yeah, we, you know we don't have to talk about all this. You know he knows what's what's what real men should do, and he's doing like whatever you know what he was supposed to do. You know he's a good guy and a good champion, and uh, I love him. You know. Yeah, no doubt, man. And I guess um, for you, has there been any assurance? I know Dana White said afterwards, after the, the fights, like, they're not doing Sean versus Ilya. He doesn't have interest in that. I think looking at the division right now, like, he's already called you the number one contender when you won against Henry, right? So 
Has there been any conversation since Saturday night between you or your manager, Oren, and the UFC at all? Or do you think that they're just kind of waiting uh, for time to pass a little bit more? Yeah, nothing uh, conversation yet with UFC. We're just waiting. Uh, uh, I think uh, today is Tuesday and it's matchmaking day and uh, hopefully any news. Uh, yeah, I th- or also Sean O'Malley just came uh, champion. I'm sure they will give him his time. I'm not rushing. You know, I don't want to like, I don't want to be disrespect. You know, I want to champion have his own time, take his time, take a vacation or enjoy with his belt. And whenever he decides he wants to fight, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm always ready. And um, as you guys see, I make weight in one week, and I was there ready for fighting. So I'll be I'll be ready. I don't have nothing to rush. But long as I know I'm the next in the line, and I know UFC know, you guys know, all the people know in the, around the world, you know. And um, I'm good at I'm like I'm blessed. Um, uh, just uh, I got here with hard work. I have a 12 fights in UFC. I should be 12 and no. I mean, if, if you guys don't see my first two fights in UFC, you guys should watch. I think I win my first two fight. I just got robbed. And um, yeah, but you know, uh, I'm not focused of my whatever it was, you know. But now I'm focused on future. I mean, uh, I am. I'm, I'm blessed and um, I'm enjoy life and uh, I want to be good good example uh, for young generations. Uh, even if you are a guy from small country, uh, small village like I am, and uh, I wasn't any special talent or something. I just put hard work in and hard work got me here and everything is possible and they can do they can change on dream too and everything will be possible for them too. It's obviously a, a great motivation. And for you, when you picture yourself, Marab Devalishvili, as you sit there in your car today against the Sean O'Malley that stepped in the cage on Saturday, uh, as you were sitting there watching it play out, I guess, how were you picturing yourself beating him? Like, how do you see this, this fight going down whenever it does happen? I take this fight as a big challenge, you know, I respect O'Malley as a good fighter, you know, he's dangerous. Uh, I want to fight him last um, six, seven years because of I see the danger, I see the good popular fighter and uh, I, I don't do, I don't look this fight easy, I just want to challenge myself. Uh, so, you know, I'm just ready for everything, you know, even, um, I don't know. I, I'm not going to say I will beat him easy or something. It's going to be a tough fight, you know. You know, as we like we we all see, you know, he was very smart against Aljo. He was running. He was he lost first round, but he was waiting for his moment. Uh but, you know, we will see. I'm a I'm a mixed martial artist, you know. I'm trying to get better like um in grappling, in in striking and uh, I can tell you how I'm going to win this fight, but I want to fight against him and I want to um, challenge myself and I want to give people what they want, you know. I want to just, uh, you know, just, you know, I'm going to fight hard and uh, we all see the results, you know. Were you surprised at all by his performance on Saturday or was that kind of the, the way you saw that fight playing out? I was a little bit surprised, you know, he make even easier than what I was accepting. He make even like more fun. I, w- I was accepting to he win decision, uh, but not like a, this one sided. Like, you know, he now this he this fight, he dominated Chito Vera and he it was really one sided. Like um, he don't give Chito Vera like uh, any chance. To any any he make easy you know and then I was a little bit surprised with this you know I, I thought it, it should be more boring fight because I, I thought Chito was gonna wait and he was gonna run but he, he was running but he was still, still punching so yeah I think a lot of people or at least some of the reactions I saw coming out of it you know they view you versus Sean is you being a very bad stylistic matchup for him in terms of the grappling 
obviously. Uh, when it comes to the striking, though, I guess how confident are you uh, with with your striking and, and being able to go toe to toe with him in some of those exchanges, like we saw with Cheeto? I'm very confident. Uh, as you guys saw, I fought uh, uh, Jose Aldo, and um, yeah, I wasn't able to take him down. And I keep a strike, and I beat him in stand up. So um, yeah, if you guys want to me strike him, I will. I will fight. You know, if O'Malley defense take down, and then yeah, I'm gonna keep a strike, and uh, <laughs> mm. I'm gonna win. You know, maybe it won't be excited and uh, more fun fight like. Uh, when you mix with wrestling, it's different, you know, it's more fun, I think, you know, and I don't, I don't like, I don't like, I like more hug, I like, <laughs> I like dominate fights, you know, I don't know, I'm not brutal, like, I'm not like, uh, they, so O'Malley break Chito Vera's face, and O'Malley break his leg, he break his hand, after fight, usually I'm fresh, I don't have no injury. <laughs> So I, this is just joke. Um, yeah, I got you. Um, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for uh, either uh, striking or wrestling, grappling. It's a MMA and O'Malley, same thing. He's training everywhere. And uh, let's see. Let's see. Show the people what they want. Yeah. And I'm I'm sure he's not on your radar in the immediate, but I don't know. I want to ask you too. Peter Yan, did you hear, uh, you know, he was kind of calling for a rematch against you. Is that the rivalry still exists there a little bit between you two? Oh, he wants to rematch. Interesting. Uh, but I was happy for him. You know, I was at the fight and I was rooting to him. You know, uh, and I'm happy Peter Yan win his fight. And uh, you know, as a fighter, he's a good fighter. I wish he's more humble. And uh, I think uh, the loss against me definitely make him more humble than he used to be. And um, yeah, I mean, yeah, he, he, hey, I'm I'm down. If he's keep winning, and uh, if I'm keep winning, and we will meet again, of course I will fight. No problem, you know. Like whatever will be. Hey, me, I'm a, like old school guy, or I I I'm, I like to fight the best of the best. And if he come on top again, and I will fight. Of course, no problem, you know mm -hmm. me. Whatever people wants and whoever will be the best in division, I will fight. But just one thing for me, this is crazy. The guys in top 15, they don't even fight somebody like like somebody fighting debut guy and he called number two guy, he called champion. This is disrespect for me. And this is what like, you know, he they may be good guy. He may be good guy, but he calling... Uh, like this is not now how it's not how it works, you know. He like I, it's crazy. Like you know, this is very disrespect. You know, everybody can beat everyone, but um, to like fight nobody and then come here and fight for the title, it's, I don't understand this. I don't know if you understand me what I'm meaning, but uh, no, I think I think you outlined it pretty good in that that video that you did uh, with the uh, the board. You know, I think I ah. understood that lesson. So. Who's been who's been helping you? Was that was that all your idea, or do you have people helping you? Those videos are great. No, that was my idea. Uh, I was so mad uh, when I see Cheeto oh, once rematch if he win the belt, uh, he wants fight for the San Hagan. And like, guys, I'm here. What are you, what are you guys talking about? Like, yeah. what are you guys talking about? Like, and then like, and then I I did I. I put together and uh, uh, yeah, of course my friend helped me, but that was my idea. But when we was recording, I started one night. I was doing the making video, and then I added some tab, and I have to continue next day. And then uh, yeah, so I mean nobody really helped me. I wish somebody helped me. If somebody wanna help me with my <laughs> make <laughs> like this, I will take. I will pay. But no, I I just myself. But you know this is just so okay. What I was saying. Um, before the there is the guy uh from Dagestan he's a good fighter but he fight nobody you know he fought the guy somebody from debut and now he wants to fight for the belt it's not how it works i think it's very disrespect you know there is other guys that who has a long win streak and he should fight them and then the top fight the top fight somebody in top 10 then top 5 and that's and then the belt but you know, like you fight nobody, and uh, now you want to fight for the belt. Yeah, you 
maybe good fighter, but like I don't and you're he's... talking about Umar. Umar, yeah, I'm right? talking about Umar. He's a good guy. I, I you know I like him and I respect you know. But he's 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 talking trash to myself. He's talking trash everybody. He's he's calling like a uh, top guys. You know, he's good fighter, but come on, bro, you gotta fight somebody good and you gotta um, the 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 you gotta just go step by step you know to fight somebody in top 15 fight somebody in top 10 fight somebody in top five and then let's put in a title conversation after you know but like yeah you good fighter but you, who knows you good fighter or no you you don't got tested yet you know you fight somebody the build guy come on and if you become champion are you hoping to kind of change that trend to try to get people you know to take fights of guys that have earned it in your mind i mean you I mean, yeah, if I, I would love to fight the, the, the next challenge, you know, the top guys, then yeah, I would like to change. Of course, I'm not going to call like now, like I said in my video, I'm not going to call rematch and retire um, Frankie Science. I'm not going to call Ricky Simon because, yes, uh, I got robbed in these fights and I, I think I d never lost these fights, but I'm not going to call Ricky Simon now because why I have to call him, you know, he's, I'm, 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 I'm like number one, or you know, like why I have to fight the guy who has a loss, you know, saying or something rematch like this, you know, it has to be the why we have a rankings here, mm -hmm. why we have like winning streak here, why we have you know, you know, saying why it's like if it's like if debut fights to champion, it's it's not UFC. This is something else. Yeah, no, I got you, and I guess last question. I know Sean O'Malley has to recover. He's got a boot on his foot. Ideal timeline for you, when would be the perfect return? Would it be like early fall? Would it be late summer? Kind of what are we thinking here? I'm ready, guys. Uh, as you guys see, I make weight in one week, and I was ready for fight last weekend, uh, uh, three weeks after my fight. And, um, and me... Um, let's let let champion take his time. Let him enjoy uh, with his belt and uh, whenever when champion will decide to come back and fight I'm ready anytime either will be June July August September October November December January I'm fine <laughs> awesome man will the jacket make a return or has that been have we put that on eBay or something uh, so I don't understand question say again no the, the jacket that you wore what happened to it will it make a make a comeback will Sean O'Malley's jacket that you stole will it will it make a return or have we seen the last of the jacket ah uh, yeah so if make the return i don't understand uh, uh, it's okay but no, don't no, worry about it no i was just saying like will we see it again you know because you yeah, had yeah, you yeah. you wore you wore a jacket like that to the next fight so i was curious if if you yeah, if you put that yeah, up yeah. for sale or no no i'm not <laughs> selling yet this red jacket but um uh, i want to he, uh, okay, okay, I'm gonna say again. So, I'm not, I'm not putting to sell this red jacket yet, but I wanna stall his another jacket, the white jacket. I like it, and then, and then when Chile, when times comes, then I wanna stall his belt. So, that's it. All right, man. Well, I appreciate your time, Marab. Good luck with everything going forward. Can't wait to see the fight whenever it happens, and uh, enjoy the rest of your week, dude. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much.